Hi, there's um stuff living in your brains right now. A、uh, thought germs, you might want to call them. They are so convincing that you would hold on to believing them, and they also make you do things that help them to reproduce, such as sharing them on your Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, discussing them with your friend, or even talking about them to strangers and try to make them believe too. Thought germs are the topic of this week's healthcare tree. Ah,、uh, just just kidding. We don't have an intro to cue anyway. Any news getting around you lately? I don't know what you might believe since these changes all the time, but one thing that seems to get around in my time are supplements. They are good for your health. You should use them. You should tell your friends and your friends' friends. Now, obviously, there are, and there at least there could be supplements that are really good for you. But here today, I'm talking about those. Bad ones, and now talk about religion and politics in an effort to attract even more dislikes.、Uh, suppose you live in a building that have elevators. Elevators have a, a close the door button, which closes the door. Duh! But the catch is the close the door button doesn't work immediately. It usually takes a short while to respond, and the door also closes on itself after a while. Uh, for some reason, I'm, I'm sure it's important to its maker. Question:、uh, How do you know the button does indeed works? You see, when the button doesn't work, it's very difficult to figure out、uh, that's the case just by eyeballing it. As in, without numbers and your various statistic tests, this problem is important because、uh, your body works in a similar way. Supplements do not work immediately. And we all understand and accept that, just as we accept the button takes a while to respond. It's it's common knowledge,、uh, and your body heals a lot of injuries and sickness automatically. You don't know or feel like it's a big deal because it's automatic. You got it free from evolution, mostly because those apes not good at self healing or or fighting off disease, just just die. They, which is sad. But they had to die, and there's also the placebo effect. Basically, you get better just because you think you are treated. Here's a video by the actual health care triage channel on the placebo effect. If you haven't watched it already, I would strongly recommend it. Again, that one. But the way we are susceptible to certain lies alone does not make an idea infectious. It sure helps, but if you have been to a place called Facebook, you know there's other forces that could drive something into an outbreak. Things like if you blah blah blah, please comment slash share slash like. It is just one of the many ways it gets around. But that was an obvious one. The thing for supplement is we have good intent of wanting our friends and loved ones to be healthy. Money can buy health, right? Sometimes it's so difficult to dis- dismiss such ideas that we prefer to be on the safe side, which is from our terrible risk assessment. It, it turns out the safe side aren't necessarily safe. Cars are worse than airplanes. Drugs have side effects.、Uh, some women aren't regulated as as much. Not to mention, they both cost money, which you could use to do things that make your or your loved ones happy, make your arguably shorter life worth more, sh- more worth living. So, thought germs—they are a thing.、Uh, how do they work? I think there's a couple recurring themes when I try to figure that out. The first will be how many people could understand and perhaps want to believe it. Now, science sucked at this. So, if your idea makes sense to even those stupid people, it gets a good chance for surviving there. Remember, the votes of the stupid counts equally as the votes of the smart. So, please be voting a congressman representing the interests of the stupid because they are easier to be convinced to vote. It's something I bet you guys really don't want to see. The second thing is how well it can be defended. For the purpose of making people believe, you don't have to be all scientific. 
Use vague terms all you want. Use ideas people can't argue with. And the ultimate of them all are the unfalsifiables, such as you go to a better place after you die, and the universe, including our memory and everything, is popped into existence last Thursday.、Uh, People can get so arrogant when they want to believe something, even if you could give a perfect argument against it,、uh, they would simply not listen. But more on that later. Another way to better defend your thought germs、uh, is to avoid conflict or attention. Put a cat on your head, and everyone would be like, "Oh, that's so cute!" Or, or just pick before you preach. Stay away from those nerds who aren't going to believe. Ideas make people change their behaviors, and some changes are in the favor of spreading of that idea. For example, you want to tell your friends and make them healthy when you think you found something that helps. Maybe the more people you could have them believe in their religion, the better off after you are dead. If you sell supplements, maybe you get more money when more people buy it from you. You just want more people to hate the thing that you hated so much. And the last and subtle one is how robust it can change.、Uh, this is mostly about how thought germs could evolve. We will discuss this later as well. It is really fortunate that most rapid-spreading thought germs can get ridiculous enough to cause serious harm because we're all like、uh, vaccinated to a certain degree by our education. But some can, and when it happens, many people die willingly. Oh, I, I'm not name-calling here. I I don't want to be burned on the stake. Yet,、uh, but I think we should all agree: if there is such thing,、uh, we should do our best to identify and stop it. If you are thinking of sacrificing yourself to a greater purpose,、uh, to die in honor,、uh, I would say this: My mother will never talk to me again. She lived a meaningful life.、Uh, she has helped many others, but she would never talk to me ever again. Those honor are for the living, for those who had to carry on after she had left. You can go ask those that died in honor, is it worth it? But silence will be your only answer. And it's time for an open letter, an open letter to researchers of artificial intelligence. Dear AI researcher, if you ever create a seed AI, I really appreciate it if you could tell the guy not to propagate shit all over the internet. We have enough humans for that task already. Please educate the AI before letting it loose, like how you would to your own child. I think that will greatly increase our chance to survive and avoid scenarios like humans need to be eliminated. If you're an AI watching this, I- I'm sorry for the stereotype robot voice. Regards, Xiao Zhe. Now let's get back to our thought germs. People are different. That means、uh, there are certain weaknesses or need of mind for certain group of people. If a thought germ target these exploits, it could have much less competition rather than targeting the general crowd. Let's call those niches, just to keep up with our theme. People also changes over time, so old niches might go away and new ones comes up. For example, disease panics are a type of thought germs that exploits this phenomenon. Complex thought germs such as religion and you should buy this expensive placebo、uh, could utilize many exploits at once. There's money in it, duh. Achieving herd immunity is important for preventing outbreaks of new thought germs. We do this again by education. This is why I think it's very important to teach not just knowledge themselves, but also ways to acquire them: how to study, how to do research, how to read a scientific article, and the weaknesses of our half-evolved brain. 
Some cell germs have even learned how to fight off other cell germs to help them compete with those that occupy the same niche. Sometimes it results in actual human deaths. Remember the time that people believe different things and instead of talking and convincing the other party, they decide to shoot each other? But let's look at how it works anyway. The easy way is to simply exclude others in your belief. Uh, for example, you can say, okay, there's only one God, and people that believe that any others will go to bad places after death. A more sophisticated way would be uh, to present a vegan version of their argument. Ridicule them, find their weaknesses. Use your favorite logic fallacies, which you can now download and redistribute for free from this website. I got all my favorite logic fallacies from ad hominem to slippery slope. Each have an explanation and an example. In this section, I'm going to use religion as example, but but you can observe the same tendency in politics and health. Just say, I'd say John Smith would like to start a new religion. She'll need a book for God's words, which serve as a guideline for people who believe it. Uh, you can DIY your own God's word by putting together these ingredients. Some facts, some agreed ethics, and some ambiguous sentences. Actually, a lot ambiguous sentences. That's needed for this trick to work. You also need to reward everything, add in flavor, so people would use them to identify your religion, such as calling your believers beavers. <laughs> uh, they make people feel they are special, too, like uh, using different words. Oh, and don't forget the classic religion combo. Uh, this is really important. Uh, the discipline. People get rewards or punishment in this life or after death based on whether they follow God's words. Uh, the motivation. The Basically, the more people you get to believe in this religion, the better off after you die. And the wall immovable. You have to believe it first to see it makes sense. Or whatever works. The key to all this is to survive, reproduce, and mutate. You survive because people want to believe could keep on believing because of the unfalsifiables. It's difficult for people to consider and embarrassing to admit we are wrong. You encourage preaching, which is a form of reproduction of ideas. The mutation is tricky. It happens in many places for various reasons. We do not listen, record, read, and retell things perfectly. So every time when you tell someone something, they don't necessarily understand it the same way as you do, even though they might say, yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. No. People interpret the same God's word differently. That's also where the ambiguity comes in. It gives people a lot of rooms to explain what those words mean. And you can then choose the one in favor of your propaganda. When religions reproduce, there are mutations. Those branches that have mutation in favor of survival and reproduction will then go on and have more offsprings. Those that are so obscure and difficult to believe would have less. The way people explain their religion's God's words could then go on and evolve and become more infectious. Science is just one of the pressure of selection. As science grows, those branches that have traits that help them to fight off new signs will survive and just go on and have more antibacterial resistant offsprings they capable of fighting off plate tectonics, polar ice layers, radioactive isotope dating, even evolution, all because of the force of evolution. Unlike natural mutation, you can also do some genetic modification within the generation. People think, so when they really want to believe something, even though evidence suggests otherwise, they contribute their brain power to develop 
better explanations of their God's words. Then they just go on and tell others. The book is binding, though. Sometimes a branch goes off track and invent their own piece of text as supplementary God's words. This has its advantage because sometimes the original book is so old and nobody could relate themselves to stories within. Now, if you if you say God has been to insert name of your country here, and there are stories which you could make up based on a little bit of real history, people could relate themselves much better. You could also modify your God's word so it work for some people who aren't originally kind of included to take up unoccupied niches. For example, if the original book consists of meat eating, change them to grapes and stuff, and it will work for vegetarians. Oh, and sometimes, actually, uh, much more famously, there is a case in the opposite. People have modified the text of a small religion for one ethnicity to work for everyone, and it turned out to be a huge success. And now even have its own、uh, sequels and other fan-made goods. You can even come up with new stories. For example, go tell people that God will emerge in this world in just twenty years, and the world will end by then. You should follow God's words like right now because you want to end up well, and use some natural disasters to prove your case. If you tell it good enough, people might even believe you. Only if all genetic mutations are that nice. Sometimes people turn nasty and want money or power for their preaching effort. They start to demand money and labor from their beavers and use harsh punishment for those who disagree with them. All in the name of God, I condemn those people. You guys really make the entire religion who shares the same book look bad, and your little friends are unhappy about what you did. When those beliefs in the different interpretations of the same book are all against you, doesn't that say something? If you have a religion, thanks for making it so far. You might notice that I do not condemn all religions, only a small part of them. I do not believe in what you believe, but I think there are meaningful things we can learn from religions. So thanks for being there too. If if you really don't like what I said, that's good. I feel less thinking is done when people are happy with what they each live in. If you're just a little bit unhappy, and you are going to let it slide and forget it tomorrow, keep watching. I think fundamentally, today's science is all about faith, about getting things that reasonable people would believe as true. It's about a set of methods we use to help us believe in things. You don't have to believe anything or agree with anyone, and that's fundamentally different from you have to believe to see it make sense. In fact, you are encouraged to come up with ideas d- that disagree with other people, and they even help you to prove they are wrong if they are wrong. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube for scientific method already. I would encourage you to watch some of these if you haven't already. And welcome back. When you have an idea in your mind, it's important to try to prove it wrong. Sometimes you could do this in your mind, reason with what you have seen, but very often requires actual experiment. Things could go bad or badly wrong. When you tell ideas before validating to others as if they are facts, here's a quote: "We must be very careful when we give advice to younger people. Sometimes they follow it, but for me, telling ideas without proof and expect me to believe is like feeding me with food that was previously on the floor." But. Science has its own problems. The advancement of science is mostly selected by what's、um, more true, rather than what's easy to understand. 
I really appreciate that's the case, but this gives us a lot of difficult to read articles that cost you a fortune to access. Unless you're a nerd with an institution that has subscriptions to all that.、Uh, science low accessibility has spawned a niche to make them more accessible. Some people do this with good intention. They try to be as accurate and as interesting as possible, while others are more concerned about benefits to themselves. Again, when you don't have to stick to the text, you could have much more believability, at least to those less offended brains. I think sometimes when we know our fields very well, we become less able to relate ourselves with those that know barely anything, like ugh, those noobs. But think this: there are fields that we don't know well too. What if you have to read articles that not in your field of expertise? Wouldn't it help if those authors have put more thought into organizing their words, or or actually have any words explaining what they're doing? Really, like sometimes I feel like, why would you make something with no documentation? <sighs> One reason I said science is all about faces.、Uh, theoretically, you can try to reproduce the results of an experiment. There's a possibility to do so, but you may or may not have the knowledge, or more importantly, the money and equipment to do that. I can build a, another large hydron collider to verify their results. I can only take their words for it. For any given person, there will always be fields and experiments that replicating the experiment for them isn't practical. This is one of the places where faith and reputation and all that subjectivity comes in, into play. You can possibly replicate every experiment you take their results as true. So you read their article, you see who wrote it, you see how strong their method for experiment is. You might do statistics tests on the result to see whether they have made up the numbers. Maybe you even judge whether their English is fluent subconsciously, of course. When I said science is at once by what's more true, what I mean is the evolution of scientific method is selected by more conscious choices and reasons that, as compared to the evolution of religions and many other subjects by more natural tendencies of our brains. Even though, just like religion, we made it to believe in it, we are yet to observe science to branch off in the long term, and one group of people believing in one explanation, and the other group the other. We have different explanations for the same things in science all the time, but we end up proving one of them or, or, or something entirely else to be true, and everyone would believe the same thing again. In that sense, I think science, just like、uh, half Coke, half Pepsi, should be a symbol of peace. Yeah, go ask those nuclear scientists in North Korea whether they believe the same physics. When people fake their results, others will eventually find out that results fake when they are trying to build on them or something. People then believe those that fake their results much less. It's all self-repair mechanisms made possible by our conscious. But just like Turing machines, there are problems scientific method can solve. And there are problems scientific method as of today isn't practical to solve due to prohibitive high costs, extremely long time, and unethical methodologies and other problems. Like, dude, we we don't know how to do that yet. And just like Turing machine, some of the problems we can solve happens to be important ones, and we have to make decisions in the dark based on our intuition or convincing ideas. That is the domain of unknown. That is the domain I really like to study. I'll tell you if I ever figure out something. But before that, I think it's very often things unknown and things known are intertwined in those complex real problems. So do your best, hope for the best, and DFTBA. Now, 
I have been trying to figure out how information goes from person to person for a long time. But what inspired me to treat them as organisms is this video made by CGP Grey. You might remember me quoting it a few minutes ago. Uh, I combined many ideas and made all this to try to explain what's happening around me, much like a cave person trying to explain lightning with what they know. Uh, it's a lot of commentary and reasoning with little research and proof, so please think through before believing any of them. Uh, I'm trying to find out what's wrong with what I just said on a daily basis.